Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Joe here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll go through some of the main newspapers around the country, see what is happening there in the headlines. We'll have a look at El Mundo, El País, El Confidencial, the state broadcaster, RTVE, maybe another one as well. And then we'll go into the comment section and see what is happening there. There were a few abusive trolls hanging around in the comment section yesterday. All I can imagine is that the weather must have been pretty bad, but uh, hopefully today's content won't set them off. Now let's get into the news. We'll go to El Mundo firstly, and there's a fair bit of news today around the government. There's a bit of a split again in the government. Pablo Iglesias has been saying a few controversial things in recent times, questioning Spain's democracy. And we can see here the main article on the left, Los Ministros del PSOE. Iglesias se ha convertido en una caricatura que no mide ni su propio personaje. So ministers on the socialist side of the government, Mr. Iglesias has become a caricature that does not even measure his own character. And another headline just below, Podemos insiste en que España no es una democracia normal. Iglesias puede dar gracias que el Estado no le envenene con Polonio. So Podemos is insisting that Spain is not a normal democracy. And somebody is quoted as saying that Mr. Iglesias can give thanks that the state does not poison him with Polonium. So I'm interested. Let's click on the article and see. So Podemos insists with a video that Spain is not a normal democracy and its attack on the media. So let's scroll down and see if we can find the video. And here it is here on the Podemos Twitter page. Let's play it. Okay, so the first thing that pops up is the king. And they're also talking about how some rappers were sent to prison for their lyrics a couple of years ago, questioning democracy here in Spain. The illegal financing scandal of the Partido Popular Party. The revolving door scandal here in Spain. 80% of ex-politicians are on the boards of the biggest companies in Spain. Power that the banks have in the media. So there we go, Podemos continuing to insist that Spain is not a true democracy. And when you watch videos like that, you can see that they're mounting a fairly strong argument. But I don't think that it's any different what goes on here in Spain than what happens in other countries around the world. A lot of the things that they pointed out there happen in other democracies around the world. So I don't think Spain is unique in that sense. But of course, a lot of the scandals that we have seen in recent times, for example, the one involving the former king, the one involving the Partido Popular political party, and a couple of people were sent to prison or maybe their sentences were suspended for writing anti-government tweets. So what do you think? Does Podemos have the right to question democracy here in Spain? Let us know in that section below. Now we'll leave El Mundo, we'll go to El País, see what is happening there. And we'll just check out the main news here, the main news on the left, again, talking about that corruption case with Luis Barthenas. And one of the main articles El País is going with here is this one here, La UE reconoce que llegó tarde a la autorización de las vacunas y que fue demasiado optimista con el reparto. So the European Union acknowledges that it was late to authorize the vaccines and it was too optimistic about distribution. And the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, is defending the vaccination strategy of the Union, although she admits there have been errors. So the European Union admitting that they stuffed it up, it's good to see that they are putting their hand up and accepting that they made a mistake. You don't see that very often from politicians, at least here in Spain. So it's good to see that European politicians don't have a problem admitting when they are wrong. Too late to authorise and too optimistic about their distribution plan. Now we'll go back into the news and we'll scroll down just a little bit here. There's some breaking news. Madrid pide ampliar a los 65 años la vacunación con la dosis de AstraZeneca para los trabajadores esenciales. Los menores de 55 años que hayan superado la COVID tendrán que esperar seis meses para ser vacunados. So Madrid is asked to extend to 65 years of age vaccinations with the AstraZeneca vaccine for essential workers. And just below that, they're saying those under 55 years of age who have overcome COVID-19 will have to wait six months to be vaccinated. And there's some more news about the AstraZeneca vaccine there on the left. Sanidad descarta los enfermos vulnerables para la vacuna de AstraZeneca. So the health department has ruled out the AstraZeneca vaccine for vulnerable patients. The vaccine will only go to essential workers and the plan will advance in a parallel fashion with health workers, dependents and the elderly. 
So the AstraZeneca vaccine taking up a fair bit of print in El País today. Madrid asking to extend the limit from 55 to 65 for essential workers. People under the age of 55 that have already had COVID will have to wait six months to get the vaccine. And the first doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine will go to essential workers here in Spain. Remember that it only arrived on Monday. It was distributed to the autonomous communities yesterday. And uh, yesterday, the health department announced that various groups of people, for example, police, school teachers, the military, and a few other groups are considered to be the essential workers here in Spain. So it looks as though I'm going to have to wait a few more months before I get that message from the health center. Now we'll leave El País, we'll go to El Confidencial, we'll get past the ad and have a look at the health data. But as we can see on the map, the colors around the country are changing. Remember the other day we only mainly saw dark blue except for a few areas in the north of the country. But we can see that that gray color is becoming more predominant around the country. For example, down there in Murcia, let's have a look. Click on there, 537 cases, so they're below 600 now. Extremadura, which was a problem area a few weeks ago, now down to 491. And uh, Catalonia, let's have a look, now down to 414. If we compare it to Madrid, 759. So a big difference between those two important autonomous communities here in Spain, Madrid and Catalonia. And if we have a look at the graph on the right, we can see the downward trend regarding that third wave is reflected there. Now we'll leave El Confidencial, we'll go to the state broadcaster, see what's happening there. We'll scroll up a bit. We can see that news on the left about the health department proposing that people under the age of 55 and who have already had COVID are going to have to wait six months. And the main story here in the center with the photo of the newborn baby, del supuesto baby boom al baby bust. Los expertos pronostican una fuerte caída en la natalidad en España. From the supposed baby boom to the baby bust, experts predict a sharp fall in the birth rate in Spain. So there you go, from baby boom to baby bust. A lot of people apparently were expecting a baby boom this year. Of course, as we know, everybody was locked down last year. You had to spend a lot of time at home with your partner. But apparently it's not the case as people are delaying their plans to have a family as a result of COVID-19. And this is a huge problem here in Spain because, as we know, the country's birth rate is already very, very low. So what's the future for a country with no youth and a country that has a pension system like the system that we have in Spain? That's the question. Now, we'll leave RTVE and we'll go to ABC and we'll see if there's an update on the vaccination plan here in Spain. We saw yesterday that 2.79% of the population had been vaccinated and now we're up to 2.81. So only a small change there since yesterday. And uh, as we can see, still a long way off that 70% mark. So the vaccination plan here in Spain running at snail's pace. Now we'll go into the comment section and see what's happening there, see if we can find a few comments. We'll have a look at this one here from My Media. Is there a similar idiom to Bob's Your Uncle in Spanish? Yeah, My Media, thanks for the comment. As far as I know, there isn't a similar expression to that one in Spanish. I don't hear too many people going around saying expressions like Roberto es tu tío. I think the easiest and best way to translate an expression like this one would be to say, ya está o listo. So to give you an example, if we said in English, you get the vaccine and Bob's your uncle, in Spanish, you would probably say, pones la vacuna, ya está. So that is how I would translate Bob's your uncle. But if anybody has any better ideas, please let us know. We'll have a look at this one here from Debbie. Hey, Stu, thanks for all you do. I keep my eye on Ivy Lista and the prices have been dropping. Yeah, Debbie, thanks for the comment and thanks for pointing that out. The website that you mentioned there, Idealista or Idealista.es, is one of the main real estate portals here in Spain. A lot of people use it to find a place to live, to find a place to rent, to find a place to buy. And it is one of the better real estate sites going around, I think. And that's the debate that we have been having over the last few days. A few people left comments the other day. Somebody in Andalusia, I think Ben said that he hasn't really seen much of a difference down there. He said that prices appeared to be a little bit inflated in that part of the world. And I I think Tamsin in Catalonia pointed out that a few people got bargains recently in a place called Castel del Fels. So if on a site like Ely Lister the prices are dropping, it obviously means that there are bargains to be found around the country. And uh, let's be honest, it is to be expected. The country is in pretty bad shape economically. And I'm sure that there are a few people out there having trouble paying their mortgages at the moment, unfortunately. 
But I think we also have to keep in mind that Spain is a country where a lot of the population's primary objective is buying their own home, and uh, a lot of people are not willing to let that asset go, and they're going to try to hold onto it for as long as they can. And that's one of the reasons why I think that this crisis is going to be different from the one back in 2008, when a lot of the property that came onto the market was in the hands of real estate developers or constructors that went broke, and it ended up in the hands of the banks who wanted to get rid of it quickly. So that's why I think that this particular crisis is a little bit different to that one, but I could be wrong. And finally, we'll take a look at this one here from Juliana, an amazing update thanks to Stuart's informative updates. Can you confirm the situation where someone who lives on their own who is allowed to join another household in a support bubble be allowed to travel in the same car with another person from their support bubble? Cheers. Yeah, Juliana, thanks for the comment. I don't think you're going to have any trouble traveling with people that are in your support bubble. I don't think they're as strict on traveling in cars at the moment as they were back when this pandemic first began. I remember last year they were very strict on this, that people from different households weren't allowed to travel in the same car, but I haven't heard too much about that this time around. I know that there are limitations of how many people can get together nowadays, especially if you are not from the same household, but again, those rules vary according to the autonomous community in which you are living. For example, the rules here in Madrid are not the same as the rules down there in Valencia, for example. So I would say that the answer to your question is yes, but again, if anybody else has different information, leave it in that section below. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, you know where to leave them. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.